when they don't have paved roads over there. You saying he flew past Chicago and Miami and L.A. and New York and Detroit. You saying he went past Cleveland and Fort Pierce, Florida, and he went past Okeechobee and Oakland. You saying he went to there. another country yeah, where they're not smoke. eating. Right. You talking about somebody who has a wife and children, five children, and lives on a farm, doesn't live here in Hollywood. You saying you oh, convinced yeah. people that person wow. was an insane Wow. And he hasn't been on movies and TV for eight years. Is that correct? Wow. Okay, then don't tell me about what you want to tell me about. I just watched you imitate the king in front of me. And then act like he's supposed to catch up and be a regular comedian wow. like everybody else. But no. He didn't go for that. That's not how I went. He was out there with us for 20 years. They called him Pilot Boy because he had 19 pilots in Hollywood. And everybody passed on him and said his show... What do you think of then when he made five hundred million dollars, they said even though his contract said he should get half of it, they said he made too much for the contract to be valid. So we'll offer you ten percent of what you made. You mean he made five hundred million and they offered him fifty? Yes. And he said, What do you think my fans are gonna say when they find out you offered me ten percent of what I made you? And they said your fans will believe that you're a crazy crap. By the time you get home. Taking from tradition, and uh, it was like a graduation lunch we were having, and they had my dad come and talk to me, and my dad takes me outside, and he's like, "Listen, and this is." Some advice that applies to all you acting students. He says, to be an actor is a lonely life. Everybody wants to make it, and you might not make it. And I said to my dad, well, well that depends on what making it is, Dad. He was a smart, smart ass kid. Yeah. It depends on what making it is, Dad. He says, what do you mean? I said, well, you're a teacher. I said, if I can make a teacher's salary doing comedy, I think that's better than being a teacher. And he started laughing. He said, if you keep that attitude, I think you should go. He said, but name your price in the beginning. If it ever gets more expensive than the price you name, get out of there. Mm -hmm. Thus, Africa. <laughs> All right, peace, y'all. Peace, peace, peace. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the legendary comedian Dave Chappelle. Now, Dave Chappelle, in my opinion, is considered to be a legend. Some people may beg to differ and think that Dave Chappelle is not somewhat funny, uh, but we're going to be talking about his come up in Hollywood and why he chose to walk away from the $50 million deal. All right? Now, uh, Dave Chappelle was born August 24, 1973. All right? um, he grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. Although uh, his family actually migrated from Yellow Springs, Ohio. All right. Now, his father, um, William David Chappelle III, was actually a music professor. And he also uh, played the role in the civil rights movement. All right. Now, he had a great grandfather who also made some accolades um, as far as with slavery and things of that nature. Uh, but Dave's father was uh, actually awarded in 1972 for breaking down the racial and ethnic conflict, a right, part of the civil rights movement. Now, Dave's mother, on the other hand, uh, Yvonne Reed Sion, was not only a political activist, but she also played the hand in the government. All right, now, like we always say, with a lot of these entertainers, all right, they... They have some type of connections to the government, all right? When you sign up to become an entertainer and things of that nature, you have to basically have some type of ties or connection within that group. Now, in 1963, she began working for the Bureau of International Organization, all right? Now, for those that don't know, this is basically a sector of the United Nations, all right? Now, the United Nations are the people that basically control this world, all right? Now, Dave Chappelle tried to uh, play sports, but he actually found his craft in doing comedy at a very young age. 
All right, well, when he figured out um, his skill was making people laugh, he started to do open mic uh, shows in D.C., you know, and during that time, he received a few laughs, you know, but um, as a young teenager, you know, he, he went out there to get his feet wet in the comedy world. Now, his mom actually enrolled him into Duke Ellington School of the Arts, all right? Now, the reason for this was because when Dave was doing stand-up, all right, um, people would often boo him. All right, so he would ask the promoters, yo, you know, what it would take for me to actually, um, you know, get more popular, all right, in the comedy world. And some of the promoters referred to him to go and start taking acting classes. This is why, you know, Dave Chappelle is more focused on the improv side of comedy, all right? He's not really a joke teller, but he does more improv. All right, now, after graduating high school, um, he moved to New York to take his career more seriously, all right? And, you know, like I was saying about the school of arts, right? A lot of these celebrities actually attend these schools. And when they attend these schools, you know, there's some teachers there that actually give them a push, all right? Or, you know, hook them up via connections to get them, you know, in entertainment, all right? Now, when he moved to New York, um, he did a show at the Apollo and was actually booed off stage. All right, but this allowed him to continue working, you know, at comedy spots, you know, uh, local comedy spots until he actually debuted on Def Comedy Jam. Now, when he debuted on Def Comedy Jam, a lot of doors started to open up for Dave Chappelle. All right, he began to get opportunities in Hollywood because now... The spotlight is on you, all right? So if Dave Chappelle partook in any type of uh, rituals or oaths, right, during that, that time period when he was trash, up until the part where he performed on Def Comedy Jam, and all of a sudden, everybody loved his comedy, right? You got to pay attention to the small details. Now, during this time, after his uh, performance on Def Comedy Jam, he began auditioning for TV shows, all right? But a lot of the shows that he was auditioning for weren't sticking. Now, he got his first shot on David Letterman and Howard Stern under the moniker The Kid, all right? And now, at the age of 19, just one year later, all right, just one year later after he graduated, all right, he starred in his first movie, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, all right? Now, this is that clip that I showed y'all about him dressing up Okay, um, in, his women, in women's clothes. Well, Howard, I... Hey, Robin. What's the matter with you? You have a cold? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. Oh, well, I'm going to have to get you some medicine. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to have to get you some medicine. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to have to get you some medicine. Now, when he played in Robin Hood, okay, he played as the character I Chu. Okay, now, this is where he began to move up in the ranks in Hollywood. And I find this to be so ironic that a lot of entertainers that actually wear the dress or, you know, perform as females, okay, um, you know, they start to move up in Hollywood, all right, which is kind of strange. You know, what is the whole concept of this? All right, now, um, he had an opportunity to work in the movie Forrest Gump, uh, where he was going to play Bubba, all right, Bubba Gump. All right, but he uh, denied that and continued to work in Hollywood. And then, you know, he started to open up for uh, people like Aretha Franklin and things of that nature. But in 1998, all right, this is where it gets a little weird. Um, him and a guy by the name of Neil Brennan, all right, wrote the script for his legendary role in the movie Half Baked. All right, now Half Baked went on to sell 17.5 million tickets. All right, with with the eight million dollar budget, so they doubled their money plus some. All right, now during the time of him writing the script, okay, um, Dave Chappelle's father actually suffered from a stroke. All right, so now, you know, when you see these type of patterns in Hollywood, all right, there is no coincidence. All right, now with his father actually dying. All right, with his father actually dying, 
um, before the movie Half Baked actually was finished, all right, I just want y'all to pay attention to this clip where he uh, speaks on this. We're on our way. What did you mean, Dave, when you described your father's death in 1998 as the beginning of a terrible decline? I was 23 when I was doing Half Baked. I was getting ready to turn 24. And I was going through all the things that a dude goes through when it goes from one level to the next. I was yeah. starring in my, a movie that I wrote. So things start getting crazy around you. Yeah. And my 24th birthday was coming on August the 24th, and I said, this is going to be a big one. And the morning that I turned 24, phone rang, and my sister was like, Dad had a stroke. For the next year, I watched my father teeter on life and death. And it was just all this stuff, man. Like I was, a uh, dad was dying, the half-baked didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out. I was real upset about that. Cause it was a real cool script. And then I saw it, I was like, hey man, you made a weed movie for kids. <laughs> and one for kids was script, you know. It was all these things, so much pressure. Africa. Then I, um, <laughs> I was in Ohio. I get a call on my cell phone from Hollywood. I'm like, hello, Hollywood. They're like, hello, Dave. <laughs> They're like, that pilot you did for Fox, the, it looks like they want to pick it up. We need you to come out because they want to meet with you. And I was like, well, listen, I can't really come out right now. I've got a real bad situation at home. Can we talk about this on the phone? No, no, they would rather meet with you in person. Huh. But you know, like the whore that they turned us into, I jumped on that plane and left my father's bedside, which I regret to this day. And I went out and I sat with these people in this room, and if you can imagine a large circle of people, and I was 12 o'clock, the black dude, a few months later, dad dies. And that's hard for a young dude in his life. That's a, that's a real tough loss. I was there when he died, and he went from being my father to what are we going to do with the body within moments. It was over, and I'm going through all this stuff, and this is the guy I would usually talk to, right? Dad. And I got to figure this out for myself. I don't want to figure this out for myself. You know, I was beat down. I wasn't living right. You know what I mean? Like, the weed thing was just bad habit at this point. And, and you know what I mean? All these, you know, chicken head girls you mess with when it comes with the territory. I'm just being real. Just being real. <laughs> just wasn't living right, man. I didn't feel good. And, and the stand-up stuff was just some angry stuff. It was just like I was kind of bottoming out. But when my dad died, because I'd been commuting back and forth to Ohio so much, that's when I bought the farm, which I called on the fuck you Hollywood farm. Now, we all know Dave Chappelle um, for his famous TV show, The Chappelle Show, all right, which was ran by Comedy Central. Now, Comedy Central actually offered Dave an opportunity to do his own show for two seasons. All right, now, at this point, you know, if you guys know who Yash Karai is, he always mentioned the $20 million club. At this point, Dave Chappelle was well over the $20 million club. Now, um, when he decided to do the show, Chappelle show, okay, a lot of people thought that Dave Chappelle was basically cooning. All right, um, and he suffered with that understanding, right? So he gets offered uh, fifty million dollars to do seasons three and four, which is why when you look at seasons three and four, Dave Chappelle is not there, but you have uh, Charlie Murphy and um, Donnell Rawlins actually hosting the show. All right now. What made Dave Chappelle walk away from the $50 million? Okay, now during this time, he actually said that, you know, um, the powers that be wanted him to wear a dress during this Oprah interview, okay? But we find that to be ironic that he previously wore a dress at the beginning of his career, which is why his career started to take off, 
All right. Now, during this time, right, during this time, um, the media decided to call Dave Chappelle crazy and said that he was actually on drugs. Now, for those that don't know, uh, we already know this, but for some that don't know, when you are in the entertainment industry and you don't get along with some of the rituals and rules that they want you to partake in, they will call you crazy, they will call you a drug addict, all right, or they will silence you, all right. Now, Dave Chappelle hadn't put himself in a predicament to be silenced, but at this point in time, you know, they took advantage of his weakness. Now, many people noticed that Dave Chappelle took off and went to Africa for about two or three weeks. And he came back and lived on a farm and kind of basically stepped away from Hollywood in a sense, right? But we also have to pay attention to the details. Now, when we see Dave Chappelle today in 2023, 24... Dave Chappelle now is um, doing plenty of Netflix specials, okay, well above that $50 million mark, all right? Now, the rules of the game don't change, only the players do, okay? So, with Dave Chappelle actually making $200 million from Netflix, okay, for each one of his specials, He's way beyond that $50 million club or $20 million club. Now, the reason why, why would Dave Chappelle say no to $50 million then, but now take the $200 million from Netflix? And this is my personal opinion, right? Um, when you are involved in Hollywood and you're making millions and millions of dollars, right, and these Hollywood executives decide to say, hey, you know what? We want you to do some type of sick, heinous act, right? That's against your morals or your will, okay? And you say, you know what? I'm leaving Hollywood, okay? And you go on to do your own thing, which Dave Chappelle did. You know, he was circling through a lot of low uh, comedy clubs during his time and, you know, making his rounds uh, through a lot of underground comedy clubs, right? And... Once he realized that the money that he was that he basically earned from Hollywood was depleting, okay, he had no choice but to get involved back in that industry. Okay, now many people believe that when Dave Chappelle came back on the scene that he was cloned. Okay, now we're gonna speak about the clone situation as well. Now, with Dave Chappelle coming out as a new individual all right, in a new mind state, okay, there have been some stories of him being cloned, and a lot of people will agree that he's not the same person from when he first started in comedy, all right, now, when I take a look at these things, I see that the media will play these games to confuse the viewer, all right, now, when we, we see Dave Chappelle specials, he doesn't tell any jokes, he's basically an activist, Okay, and giving more of a lecture. Okay, they made him into a, a spokesperson, more more so over than a comedian. All right, and this is the issues that people are having. A lot of these comedians now are pushing the conscious route. Okay, they're pushing the consciousness route. So when we take a look at these things and we see Dave Chappelle. Um, playing this role, do I believe that he has been cloned? Um, it is a possibility. Uh, but do I believe Dave Chappelle sold out? Yes, indeed. Okay? And um, like I tell you guys all the time, you know, when these people sign up to partake in this business, they cannot go back to being regular people. Okay? Because all of their supplies or finances will be depleted and cut off, okay, and, you know, we can't picture Dave Chappelle wa working at Walmart, all right, um, to pay for his bills and things of that nature, being a regular Joe Schmo, so um, when we see these celebrities get back involved in the industry, it shouldn't be any surprise, okay, they belong to that system 
for the rest of their lives. All right. So with that being said, I hope I broke this down for you guys. And uh, we're going to get some more videos sooner than later. All right. Peace.